Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lollipop, and today we're going to be comparing every single full suspension mountain bike that Trek sells. I'm going to go over all the bikes together to give you a quick but detailed overview of each model so you can decide which bike is the best for you. Then at the end I'll summarize and tell you which bike is the best for what type of rider. This video will thus cover the 2022 Trek Super Caliber, Top Fuel, Fuel EX, Remedy, Slash, and the Trek Session. So if you enjoy, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell icon since I love making these comparison videos and I want to continue making more. So first of all, in case you don't know, a full suspension bike is one that has a suspension fork in the front of the bike and a suspension shock in the rear to make it more capable and comfortable over rough terrain. For the comparison, I made this timeline graph to arrange all of the bikes, and the first topic we'll discuss is the category and the amount of suspension travel. So for this, I'm going to move from the most cross-country focused bike with the least amount of travel to the most downhill bike with the most amount of suspension travel. Thus, I'm starting with the Trek Super Caliber, which is Trek's cross-country or XC race bike, designed to be lightweight and fast to win cross-country races. This bike is designed for efficiency, so it has 100 millimeters of travel in the front suspension fork and 60 millimeters of travel in the rear shock to give it some rear compliance without compromising on pedaling efficiency and thus speed. The next bike is the Trek Top Fuel, which used to be their cross country race bike but is now a down country bike, which means it is still cross country but has more travel to make it more capable. It has 120 millimeters of travel in the front fork and 120 in the rear shock, so it's less harsh than the Super Caliber, but it sacrifices some speed and efficiency as a result. Then we have the Trek Fuel EX, which is Trek's most popular full suspension bike, and that's because it is an all-mountain trail bike that can do everything. It comes with 140 millimeters of travel up front and 130 in the back to make it a capable bike for riding uphill and downhill. Basically, if you have to pick one bike to do it all, pick the Fuel EX. Next, we have the Odd Bike Out, which is the Trek Remedy. This is the only bike in Trek's lineup that uses 27.5 inch diameter wheels, but I'll get to that later. This bike is considered to be a long travel trail bike or an enduro bike, since it has 160mm of travel in the front fork and 150 in the rear shock, so a lot of travel to handle big bumps on the trail. This bike is mainly designed to be playful and easy to maneuver. Moving on, we have the Trek Slash. This is a full-on enduro race bike designed to go very fast downhill, but is still able to climb uphill if you need it to. It has 170 millimeters of travel in the front and in the rear to make it really capable and able to handle almost anything you throw at it. And lastly, we have Trek's downhill bike, the Trek Session. This bike has 200mm of travel in the front and the rear, which allows it to be good at one main thing, going down a mountain as fast as possible. This bike of course does not have a wide enough gear range to climb uphill at all, so it requires a shuttle of some sort to get back up the trail to ride down again, but that's the price you pay for having the most capable bike for going downhill. And that's it for the categories, now we can dive deeper by first talking about the wheel sizes. I'll show all the sizes up right now, but as I mentioned before, the Trek Remedy is the only bike that comes with 27 and a half inch diameter wheels only. All the other bikes in most frame sizes come with 29 inch diameter wheels in the front and in the rear, and that's because 29 inch wheels roll faster and go over rocks and bumps easier since the wheel is larger. Now you'll notice the Session is able to accommodate a 27 and a half inch wheel setup, and it can also be set up mullet, which means it has a 27.5 in the rear and a 29 in the front, but the bike is only sold as a full 29er setup. And regarding the Remedy, 27.5 inch wheels make a bike more maneuverable and playful, so it's easier to throw around the bike and have some fun, but it also means you'll be a little bit slower at speed and won't go over bumps as easily, which means you'll have to choose your lines a little bit more carefully. But we have to talk about some frame geometry numbers for this comparison, and of course each bike will have geometry suited to its purpose. And for a quick background on these numbers, the head angle essentially means how far out the wheel is going to be from the front of the bike, and the C-tube angle just means how angled the C-tube is, so it determines where your position is over the bike. So for cross-country bikes like the Super Caliber, the head angle will be steeper to put your body weight more forward for better traction while climbing, which means the front wheel is closer to the bike. This however also means that your weight will be too far forward for confidently going down steep terrain. 
That's why the geometry for the Fuel EX is pretty much in the middle between the cross-country bikes and the enduro or downhill bikes, which makes it balanced and equally capable of going uphill and downhill. And then for the enduro and downhill bikes, the head angle is slacker to push out the front wheel to make the bike more stable while going down at high speeds. And real quick for the seat tube angles these days, steeper is usually better to push the seat more toward the middle of the bike so your center of gravity is in the middle and so it's easier to climb on the bike. And then the reach is basically describing how long a bike will feel when you're on it. And this is mainly personal preference, but I figured I'd show the numbers here for those of you who want to know. And lastly, I'll show this graph that hopefully gives you a good idea of the price ranges these models offer. So you can see the prices in US dollars on the bottom and the bike models on the left. And these bars represent the lowest priced bike in the lineup and the highest priced bike. So here the Fuel EX has the least expensive full suspension bike that Trek offers which is the Trek Fuel EX5, and the most expensive bike currently is the Trek Slash 9.9 XX1 Axis Flight Attendant, which is a mouthful, but it's super high-end, so that makes sense. So simplifying all of that information, basically get the Super Caliber if you want a lightweight and fast bike for lighter trails, get the Top Fuel if you want a more capable cross-country bike that is still fairly efficient, and then get the Fuel EX if you want a do-it-all bike for all types of riding. Get the Remedy if you prefer the smaller wheel size for a more technical riding style and for fun on rough trails and at bike parks. Or get the Slash if you want the speed and capability of smashing down a trail and you want to still be able to climb back up the trail when you're done. And then finally get the Session if you love going downhill and don't mind using a shuttle or driving back up to ride down again. But those are all the main differences among the 6 full suspension bikes that Trek sells. I don't want to make this video too long, so this is just an overview, but let me know in the comments if you want a more detailed or specific comparison between some of these models. Besides that, thank you all for watching. I hope all of you have a great day today, and remember to keep biking.